Hi, welcome to Spring Hill Baptist Church's Kids Club Online. I'm Miss Chris, and today I have a question. Have you ever had to do something that, well, maybe made you afraid or made you feel uncomfortable or you just weren't sure about? I think we all have. And you know, it's always a great thing to pray because we can trust in God to help us. And today we're going to be learning from the book of Esther. It's in the Old Testament, and it's about a girl named Esther. She had to trust God, and she did. And she did what she knew was right, because she had God leading her. It's an awesome story, and I hope you can stick around and learn about Esther. The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in book 17 of the Old Testament, Esther. God made a plan to bless the whole world through Abraham's family, the Israelites. But over and over, God's people would run to God and then pull away, back and forth, just like a yo-yo. At last, God allowed the Israelites to be captured by foreign nations so they would understand they can only be happy close to God. Even in captivity, though, some of these men and women still loved and honored God, like a girl named Esther and her cousin Mordecai, which is where our epic story begins. Take it away! Years before, the Jewish people had been captured and taken from Jerusalem to Babylon. But then, Babylon was conquered and became part of the Persian Empire, with Susa as its capital. So. Esther grew up in a land that was not her own, and when her parents died, her cousin, Mordecai, raised her as his own daughter. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love Him with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. One day, a new king named Xerxes came to power in Persia, and this guy was a character. He threw a crazy wild party and then fired his own queen for refusing to show up. Not the kind of guy you want running your country. Anyhow, when he finally calmed down, he realized he didn't have a queen anymore, so he decided to look for a new one. After a long search through the entire kingdom, Xerxes chose Esther. Cousin Mordecai, what do I do? Don't tell anyone you're from a Jewish family. We've already seen that Xerxes didn't bother to think much before making decisions, so he chose on a whim to promote an official named Haman to take charge of all the other nobles in the kingdom. Haman had a ginormous ego, and he loved making all the other officials outside the palace bow low to him. But Mordecai refused to bow down to Haman, and this made Haman so mad he about went through the roof! Haman was such a terrible guy that he decided not only to punish Mordecai, but every single Jew in the country. He went to King Xerxes with a terrible plan. <laughs> Your Majesty, these Jews live differently than everyone else. They don't obey your laws. Who do they think they are? I know, right? <laughs> Give the order to destroy them. Hmm. Consider it done. I can't even. Xerxes actually sent a letter all over the kingdom declaring that on the 13th day of the 12th month, all Jews were to be killed. When Mordecai and the other Jews discovered this horrible news, they dressed in rough cloth and wept bitterly. Mordecai sent a message to Esther in the palace, telling her what Haman had done. You must ask the king to save our people. Esther was devastated. She sent a response to her cousin. Tell him, no one can come before the king unless he sends for them. If I do it, I'll die, unless he reaches out his gold scepter to me. Mordecai sent his answer right back. You may not escape, even though you are queen. Who knows? It's possible you became queen for a time just like this. Esther knew Mordecai was right. She sent him one more message. Tell Mordecai, gather all the Jews. Don't eat anything for three days. 
I and my servants will fast too. Then I'll go to the king. Esther faced a terrible dilemma, but she took three days to prepare her heart and her mind. Then she went to face the king. It must have taken every ounce of courage Esther had to step through those doors. And then she had to wait what felt like an eternity for the king to even notice her. At last, he looked up. Then he smiled and reached out his golden scepter. What is it, Queen Esther? I'll give you anything up to half my kingdom. <sighs> Esther must have been shaking with relief. But instead of making her request right away, she asked the king to attend a special banquet along with Haman. The king was flattered and curious. At the banquet, he told her once more, I'll give you anything up to half my kingdom. I'd like you and Haman to come to another feast tomorrow. Then I'll answer your question. What? The king was so intrigued, he agreed to come back again. The next night, he and Haman joined Esther at a second festive meal. What do you want me to do for you? I'll give you up to half my kingdom. Esther took a deep breath and put it all on the line. Your majesty, let me live. Please spare my people. We have been sold to be destroyed. Who is the man who has dared to do such a thing? Haman is the one. Xerxes was so enraged that he had Haman killed. Then the king created a new order that would allow the Jews to be saved. We will celebrate this day with great joy. The end. Wow, King Xerxes was kind of a loose cannon. <laughs> exactly. There was no way to predict what he would do, but Esther leaned into God, and she took a big, courageous step, even though she had no idea what would happen. So what's our part in the story? Well, there might be a mean kid at school, someone who's always shoving smaller kids around or making fun of people. Yeah, and everyone's afraid to stand up to them. You can ask God for courage to be the one to face the bully and tell them, stop it. That's not okay. It's also important to let a teacher know what's going on. That takes courage too. Exactly. Or maybe you're selling cookies for a fundraiser and you need to ask a neighbor you don't know to buy some. It might feel pretty scary to knock on their door, but you can ask God for courage for that too. It's true. God never asks us to face tough situations on our own. That's one of the reasons God gave us Jesus. When we believe that Jesus is God's son and choose to follow him, we have the power of God's Holy Spirit living in us. We can be ready for anything that happens. And that is super awesome to remember. So true. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye, Erica. So here's the thing. You can do what you should, even when you don't know what will happen. 